welcome back to Swan Dive, a Spire campaign by the Savage Godlings. Last we met, old friends, our cell of ministers got embroiled in a high-profile party being held within a gargantuan hanging glass mobile of a garden hung from the ceiling of the District of Amaranth, the High Elves' own frigid district of art and ice. This spiral garden soiree is being thrown by the eccentric Titus Yearns Through Eternity in celebration of the promotion of Reeson, a paladin captain of mild renown, and attendance is rife with Spire's most influential, and conveniently enough, several individuals attached to the Forefather Mystery, including Deacon Harold the Sunrise himself. Willow has found herself entry via a date with retired paladin Captain Patrocles. Griff has disguised himself among a whimsical band of cake purveyors, and Gatrice and Sinet found their way in the old-fashioned way. Flashing coin. Now the night unfurls before them, mysteries and dangers waiting in every shadowed hallway behind every pair of seemingly kind eyes, and within every offered golden party favor. I do thank you again for inviting me to go and see, uh, what did you say it was your engine? I like to call them my Porth engines, as I believe it is the proper name, but they're Vermissian engines around here. Oh, well, that's mighty impressive. I do look forward to seeing it. Uh, however, I did remember that I promised Patrocles that I would go to his after party with him recently, and, uh, I'm just wondering if perhaps I could see your Porth engine some other time, Miss Elsbeth. I still am interested. Oh. No. It's no harm. I just don't want to appear rude. I did already agree. No, no, um, no, no, no. It's fine. I understand. You have previous engagements. Then it pulls her drink closer to herself. You might want to be getting back to Patrick, please. Huh? Would it be possible at all to come and see them some other time? I mean, trust me, if... If this is my only opportunity, then I'll, I'll leave Patrocles behind in a heartbeat, but... Perhaps later. Okay. Perhaps later. It was a pleasure to meet you. It was a pleasure to meet you as well. I do hope you'll keep me in your mind. <laughs> Maybe. Kind of pushes her chair out. Looks at you a little bit, and then steps off into the crowd. Which, of course, is beginning to swell. Uh, yeah, the, the party is getting full swing, especially after our introductions to our guest of honor, Captain Reeson, who, of course, is being promoted uh, to uh, a higher rank. Uh, yeah, so uh, I believe we're going to go with Major. Um, I th maybe some brief discrepancy with past description, but uh, we're going to at least try for the military rank thing. Uh, okay. Katrisa, Zanet, how do you enter this party? The, the front door? Yeah, of course. But what are you doing? What are, you, are, are you grabbing drinks? Are you together? Are you looking for somebody? Are you trying to meet up with everybody I, else? I'd like to think that we're together. Um, yeah, I feel like we 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 just walk down from the, the battlement or whatever it was we were up on. I guess just down into the courtyard since they already know we're up there. Yeah, sure. I feel like you probably have the past the guard that you talked to and uh yeah he's probably just averting his eyes trying not to look at either of you and the, the courtyard is chock full and people are bringing food out into the courtyard to you know, sort of eat and mingle out there and get a little bit more privacy um, and yeah people are coming in very populated yeah i i guess i'll i'll look at gertrice and say i know you want to help but sometimes you, it doesn't have to be so drastic just Grab something to drink, mingle around. If you find something, you find something. If you don't, you don't. Oh, I, I don't know. I don't know about drinking on the job. Not really stand a job now, is it? Say no more. And uh, Gertrisa just like winks under, but she, you know she's wearing a shroud, so no one can see it. <laughs> oh, and, and brief discrepancy, um, again, from last episode, and my fault for not clarifying the lore. In Amaranth, it is uh, legal that you have to wear a mask. It, it, it's illegal to not be masked. Um, so I think everybody filled that requirement, except for maybe Sunette, uh, although you may have said something and I just have forgotten it. 
Uh, I didn't realize. Uh, yeah, there we go. I, I, I would assume she could get a mask uh, to fill in this legal requirement. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, I, it's my fault. I should have mentioned something. Um, do you have an image in, in your head for uh, image in your head of the kind of mask that Sinette would uh, would wear? Not really. Um, I feel like it'd be simple. It wouldn't be overly ornate or anything. It's something that she has she hasn't put any, you know, care into. So she doesn't see it as, you know, harboring any gods or anything like that. Um, so it's probably just, like, either a single color or maybe two at most. And just kind of expressionless. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, yeah. So you guys make your way in. So, Gertrude, so what are you going to do here? I think... Gertrice is just gonna um, walk around with Belvin, uh, maybe get get a drink, and uh, just sort of float around looking for the others. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, I feel like, especially uh, you know, Willow being with somebody so high profile, probably doesn't take super long uh, to. Although maybe you can catch her in between um, getting back to Patrick's and leaving Elspeth. Yeah, I'd be down. I, I can see her just like uh, just waving to Willow as soon as she sees her, just like no subtlety at all. Oh, uh, oh, uh, M- Miss Gertrisa, is that? She's like kind of walks over to her. Is that is that you under that shroud? I assume. Oh, Willow, how 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 is your evening going, dearie? Is your uh, date to your liking? Oh, well, you know, at this point, my date's almost the least of my worries, but, uh, uh, let's talk about you. How has your evening been going, Miss Gertrisa? I'd much prefer to hear about that. I tried to kill someone, but Sinette stopped me. Oh? Well, I, uh, am glad that you did not have to kill anybody. That is a good thing overall for us, I feel. Yes. Hmm. Yes, it is. So, are you just standing here now, Miss Gotrisa? Do you have any plans? Nothing really. I suppose I'll just enjoy the atmosphere while uh, I wait for something to happen. I'm much more good in, you know, the, the, the more dangerous situations. Well, if you like, you could... Stay maybe, you know, a good distance behind me and watch out for me. I mean, I already have Orin posing as my bodyguard, and I was actually just about to get back to him and talk about that, but I, I could always use the extra pair of eyes looking out for me. Oh, no worries at all, dearie. Belvin already has your scent. Oh, well, I thank you, Miss Gertrisa. And I thank you too, Belvin. You know, Belvin, like, wags his tail at the mention of his name. Mm-mm. Oh. Well, good boy. Okay, and I, well, I really must be getting back to Patrickley's now. Uh, I trust perhaps you'll stay out of trouble until then, Miss Gertrisa. Oh, no promises, uh, really. <laughs> well, I'll take what I can get. Yeah, and so I think she's just going to follow uh, Willow at a distance. Yeah, yeah. So you see Oren, um, and then probably also, you know, back in the buffet, uh, around the, the giant table with all the food. Um, I'm gonna stop by him before Patch goes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, hey there, Oren. How are you doing? Uh, you know, eating the best food I've ever had in my life. I was, uh, old Patrick, please. Oh, well, I actually haven't gotten back to him yet. He dropped me off with some lady named Miss Elsbeth. I was just about to go find him. I was just seeing if you wanted to continue posing as my bodyguard, perhaps. You know, it might add to the verisimilitude of it all. Sure, as long as you're not alone with that chump. <laughs> I thank you for not leaving me alone with him. Let us go. Oh, and uh, Miss Gertrisa will be following us as well. Cool, even better. Gertrisa once again waves... <laughs> a little head nod. <laughs> that a sheet ghost over there, with the little ghost, with the little dog sheet ghost next to her. Huh. It'll be nice to have them, you know, watching over us. Yeah, inconspicuous too. Hey, that's a word for it. <laughs> Let's go get a move on. 
Well, Willow, you've certainly been gone long enough. And you see Patrick Lee is over there talking to Reason, um, and uh, yeah, what looks to be two other paladins, and uh, and, sort of chatting up, and he kind of waves you over. You can bring your friend, of course. (laughs) I'm sorry, Patrick Lee's. I just found so much in common with Miss Elspeth, and just like you said, we had such a riveting conversation. I can't thank you enough for inv- for introducing us. My pleasure. I know many interesting individuals around Amaranth. <laughs> Speaking of which, the most interesting one of the evening. This is our guest of honor tonight, Major Reese. And he kind of gives like a, a little dramatic bow. And uh, Reeson looks embarrassed and kind of waves him off. Stop, stop, please, please. Ah, well, Major <laughs> Reeson, it is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Mm. I am Breeze Through the Willow. Pleasure to make yours. I am, as our friend here said, Major Reeson. I hear we, we are all gathered here tonight in celebration of you. How does that feel? Are you bashful? To say the least, it's a little <laughs> embarrassing. I have to say I would be, too, with all this hullabaloo just for me. My, I can't imagine myself in your shoes right now, Major Reeson. I got where I am through quiet, focused service. I cannot say that that was conducive to this sort of social event. (laughs) Well, I think I like you, Major Reeson. It's an honor to meet you. Thank you for attending this gathering. If you're a friend of Patrick you're a friend of mine. And you, young man, kind of looks over to, to you, Oren. Uh, my name's Oren, sir. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. Congratulations on your promotion. Thank you very much, and a pleasure to make yours. It is uh, quite the honor to uh, serve, as well as I have, along men like Patrickles, uh, my fellow attendants back here. It is uh, uh, an unimaginable honor to be given the position I've been given. I want to use nose for trouble. Okay. I, uh, for, for anybody, I don't think I've actually used this recently, so I'll read it out again. Uh, once per scene, I can ask the GM what's weird or out of place here. And this is an Inksmith ability. It's a core ability. Uh, so yeah, what is weird or out of place here? One of the attendants looks super fucking fidgety. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, uh, he clearly is, like, not engaged with the conversation. He's kind of looking at everywhere else, and he's, yeah, just clearly sort of, uh... I wouldn't say tweaking. I don't think that's quite the right language, but uh, torqued, right? He's he's got some energy in his in his bones. Hey, uh, you okay there, friend? Guy's head snaps over. Hmm? Uh, you just you seem a little nervous there. Are you all right? Do you need a glass of water or anything like that? <laughs> don't be ridiculous. I'm fine. Pay me no mind. Oh, hmm. and you see, recent turns. Are you, are you all right? And, and uh, the guy kind of nods. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Just uh, kind of seeing some people I didn't expect. And you kind of... Uh, I mean, you can't see him raise an eyebrow. He's wearing a mask. Ah, elf here! Uh, but, uh, yeah, it kind of <laughs> gives, gives an inquisitive head nod, or head tilt, and uh, says, mm, Well, I'll do with that in private moment. And yeah, you see the yeah, the younger attendant nods, and it turns back. It seems as if I must have a private conversation with some of my men here. I certainly hope you can excuse us. Patrick Lewis. Well, no issue at all, Reese, and please, take your time. You are the man of honor. Anything you want, we're here to serve. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Patrick Lewis, for your uh, incomparable flattery. Willow, <laughs> Lauren, it was a pleasure. Likewise. And uh, nods and marches off. Can I... Maybe make an investigate roll to see if I could tell where that attendant was nodding his head toward, where he was tilting his head. Yeah, uh, but I think so maybe it... like glance over my shoulder. Really quick. Sure, give me a roll. Okay. Uh, is our domain high society? High and low. Oh, okay, cool. Awesome. I have both, but I got a nine. Fantastic. Um, yeah, uh, you can follow that general, uh, you know, sightline path, and you don't really see a whole lot of people you recognize, except for Samet. All right, I'll keep that in mind. All right. And then, yeah, you see, they sort of go off and disappear down a hallway, kind of sort of towards a, a, a private space, clearly. Okay. Uh, I think, actually, uh, Patrickles, I'm terribly sorry. I know that we've just reunited, but uh, do you mind if you excuse me for just a moment? You're being awful flighty, young Willow, but I'll excuse one more absence. 
Thank you so much. I promise I won't let you out of my sight for the rest of the night after that. Sounds like a wonderful time. Bring me a binet while you're over there, will you? <laughs> will do. Mm. And yeah, goes back to sipping and uh, kind of looks around and takes off to go chat to somebody else. Yeah, I'm going to uh, go over to Sinet, <coughs> actually. And cool. uh, make my way over there. What you doing, Sinet? Uh, I followed my own advice and grabbed drinks and mingled. <laughs> Yeah, so Sinet looking elegant, like a, like an elegant mother drinking her Merlot. Yeah. I think Willow comes up and uh, sort of gently puts a, rests a hand on like her upper arm. So, uh, Miss Sinet, do you mind if I pull uh, you aside for just a moment? Uh, no, I was not busy. Okay, good, good. Yeah, I feel like she just uh, pulls her into like a less populated corner of the party, as one does. Um, and she's like, uh, so... I was just over there with the Man of Honor of the evening, and uh, one of his attendants seemed real fidgety about your appearance here in particular at the party, uh, if, you know, my sightline is to be trusted. Are you sure it was me? There's a lot of people around here. Well, there's nobody else who really looked... N- no offense or anything, of course, but out of place. A midwife does command some sort of attention. Could have been that, though... It was one of the paladin's attendants, so you can never be too careful. Do you have any idea at all what that could be about? I cannot say for sure. Maybe it's the presence of a midwife they were not expecting. Uh, We are a rather prestigious group of individuals among the Drow Society. Maybe that caused them nervous. Yes. I doubt Mm. my name has any sway here. Hmm. Well, look after yourself, friend. Please, be careful. I mean, there are threats from from more sides than, than you might think. And I feel like uh, she actually <coughs> oh, like tilts open her coat and tilts open that little like pocket that she has the golden nose in, Nimvile's nose, and she like lets Sinet see it uh, very subtly. Uh. There's no CN. Show me this. Just yes. I... Does not surprise me, but it is very... I had my suspicions when he did not appear for our next meeting. I was not sure how, but this makes the most sense. Um, I'm not sure what would happen to me if it got out that I showed you this, so, you know, just please, obviously, I don't tell Miss Mosien or anyone or anything, but I just... Please look after yourself, friend. Oh, Willow, your caution does me wonders. What we do here is dangerous. And not just for ourselves. Some people's names do not want to be out in the open, and... We are the scapegoats in that time of need. Right. Take that caution and wear it upon yourself, as I certainly do myself. Thank you for your concerns. I will continue to listen around. Your, uh, guest seems to be rather fidgety. Oh, yes, I, I better get back to him. Uh, thank you, Miss Sinet. No worries, Willow. Uh, keep safe. You too. Yeah, she makes her way back to Patrickles. And then I feel as if, um, while you're making way to Patrickles, Sinet, you can see in the distance... Somebody makes eye contact with you through the crowd. A dark, hooded, long-haired figure. Um, through a mask that is essentially nothing but, but thin black lace. That's Nocien. And you see, yeah, she's surrounded by her, her three Ludden and San uh, individuals, and she gives you a, a slow, serene nod. I don't think Sinet does anything overt. She just kind of quickly turns her head away. Like, she's ashamed of it all, but still goes along with it. Okay. All right, so let's jump over um, in the midst of all this, the hustle, the bustle, the replacing of the cakes, the moving of the platters. Griff, you are in the midst of employment, my friend. Yes, uh, very excited about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I guess I guess Griff is just sort of, I think he kind of got caught up, caught up in it. 
Okay. Um, like maybe maybe forgot a little bit why he actually came to the party. <laughs> <laughs> like he just really wants to do a good job. Um, good little boy. He's in too deep. He's in too deep. <laughs> he's in. <laughs> he's just a sweet little man. Um, yeah, he's just he's just bustling around. Uh, definitely keeping like his ears open. Awesome. Um, but for for the most part, I think his efforts are going. Almost entirely, too, just doing a good job. Hell yeah. Uh, cool. I, I, yeah, I won't make you roll for anything there. I think Lewis notices <laughs> your good job. Like I, I think I think that's that's within purview. Uh, yeah, you're hustling and bustling. You're making the other guy that came with you look like shit. Um, I feel like that guy. Oh, hell yeah. guy's probably a little older than you. Sort of like pudgy and broad, kind of you know, doughy in the face, and uh, just kind of clearly just here for the paycheck. Um, getting a little flustered at how good it, you know how good you are at this. It's it's a it's a shame when their heart isn't in it. <laughs> the cake serving you you have to be dedicated to the passion of it all. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I feel like you start to begin to see more um, of your fellow uh, servers, right? Your fellow attendants. Um, I'm using that word too loosely. I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, your fellow attendants, right? Like the, the attendants that were with Reason to clarify, right? Those were like fellow paladins. Um, I just attended as if they attended with him. Uh, that's the only thing I meant by that. Mm-hmm. Um, but but your fellow literal attendants to the party itself. Um, yeah, you see Jean Paul and his his boys, uh, and the, the, this incredibly lie, the orangutan esque looking guy, uh, this giant uh, gorilla guy that's, that's moving crates and helping other people out, and uh, you know, Jean Paul himself and, and the two apes that uh, sort of looked sort of twinish, um, are yes, yeah, serving and carving fruit up, I'm sort of making like. What is it, like mango nadas that people keep making around here? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? It's, it's stuff in that ballpark. Shaved fruit and uh, and uh, lots of uh, desserts and uh, fruit arrangement, edible arrangement type stuff. And you're also seeing um, there's another big, uh, like, caterer focus. There's some sort of, sort of like long flowing silk themed uh, carvery. So uh, we talked last time, right? Hmm. Sort of like a, a shawarma or like a gyro or something. Uh, they're roasting animals, and you see now they've set up like a live pig spit. Well, not a live pig, it's a, you get what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, they've got a pig spit going on, um, and uh, you know they, they've got all these like pots and pans they're roasting over this fire, and, and they're all dressed in a very peculiar way. Um, a way that I think most people will be able to recognize, other than like the liter- the dumbest amongst you. Um, like maybe Willow. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just the, the, those of you who have not lived in Spire very long. Um, th- these folks are clearly at least themed in aliquam um like a, a big a middle eastern um sort of background it's it's sort of a, a, a desert uh, kingdom they have carnivals that they're sort of famous for and uh, yeah just a lot of classical drow culture and, and this carberry is clearly that um and you see that uh, the primary attendants other than like the chefs i think there's probably like two of those uh, clearly like uh, drow um are three dingy looking guys probably about your age just very loosely costumed in sort of like a, a aliquam silk I guess he, uh, I guess Griff, um, sort of like snapping back to reality, um, nobody say a thing, uh, I guess, I guess he just sort of checks on his compatriots, cause, uh, I, I feel like he's confident in his, in his own, um, sort of fiction right now, he's pretty confident in, like, how he's blending in, I guess he's checking on, uh, everybody else, seeing if they're vulnerable, seeing if anybody's, like, tailing, um, any of his any of his compatriots? Okay, yeah, trying to keep an eye peeled. Um, yeah, you absolutely see that uh, one of these little dingy little carvery boys keeps kind of eyeballing. Mm-hmm. He's just eyeballing everything. Like he is looking too hard at everything. Uh, he's like not doing his job at times and just sort of like sitting around and like staring at the tables and like staring at tables of people and poking around doors and shit. Uh, yeah, and here like one of those chefs keeps having to yell at him. Uh, and he comes scampering back. Uh, yeah, this guy's cl- tailing may be a bit extreme, but maybe casing um, is something. He, you- he looks suspicious. He looks very suspicious. All right, yeah, I uh, Griff, I think, uh, wanders over. Uh, is he is he working like right now on the line? Um, no, I think probably right now he's probably like you know bringing some bringing like a, a crate of, of produce kind of back over to their their part of the yeah their campfire part of the line sort of thing. All right. Uh, I think Griff wanders over with uh, with his little platter, with little cakes, um, and uh, I think he's gonna try and strike up some conversation with this shifty looking fella. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. This guy's yeah, he's got a whole um, bunch of produce in his arms. Yeah, just walk over. Eh, some gig, huh? Oh, 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, real, real, real hard gig. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about it. These, these, these folks are uh, a little demanding. You know what I mean? You, 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 you know what I mean? Well, they're working us, man. They're, they're, they're working us. You figure with all they have, you know, they'd be a little more relaxed. You know, let us kind of let us relax too. You know. Right, that's what I figured. Like, like how, like how stressed can you be if you have like giant bubbles and stuff? Like, come on, man! Like, yeah. give us a break. You can afford this many servants. I mean, come on. How how hard do you really need people working? You know. So what you what, what you what you up to? What you what you doing there with that? With uh, what uh, what's your what's your story? What's your deal? Oh, I just got some veg. You know, I'm just bringing some veg back over to the line. Oh yeah, just living that veg lifestyle. Oh, I yeah, get oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, just living that veg life. Oh yeah, dude. Hey, my boys, we just uh, you know, we just got a job with these guys uh, a little while ago. How, what what a coincidence! I just got a job uh, real quick with uh with with my folks, you know. Oh, well, you know, uh, employment turnover, you know, pretty pretty harsh, pretty harsh here in, in the spire. Yeah, it's it, yeah, it's it's a little unforgiving, but you know what? That just it's like a revolving door. You know, somebody comes out, another comes in. That's what I'm saying. It's a it's a very very sad state of things, but it 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 it, it works. Um, it works like a lean to. It's not the best, but it'll keep you dry. It'll keep you dry, my friend. That is true. That's very true. What is a uh, what's your thing? What, what what's going on with you? Oh, you know, just uh just uh just you know uh, handing out some cakes. You know, just walking around with some cakes. Oh, cool. You know that uh that 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 high sugar deliciousness yeah, yeah, yeah. they look real good yeah very very they're they're and i like get a little closer i'm like they're very good the, oh, wow. these cakes are so good oh, okay well i would love <laughs> i would love to have one and i lower i lower the tray to his his level uh -huh. and just sort of like nudge it towards him i feel like he, he eventually like, probably about now you're reaching the line he drops his produce you know off kind of slides it i, I brought back you know, the, the vegetables. Uh, you see one of the chefs yells, hey, Shut the hell up! And he's, oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, and you know, he kind of uh, winces and then looks back over and he's like, Oh, uh, yeah, I better uh, go go eat this uh, eat this somewhere else. You want to come hang out with me and my boys? Uh, Yeah, you bet. I'd love to hang out with some boys. Oh, okay. Uh, well, uh, seems like kind of slowing down. Come on, boys! And you see the other, the other two, like, scroungy, <laughs> nasty little attendants kind of turn. And they, they kind of look at each other and they kind of mutter something and then yeah they scamper away and the chef's like where you going hey where you going we're gonna be back sir we're just going on our uh, a ma mandated break you don't get mandated a break what the hell are you on about okay we'll be right back um, and then yeah he just starts to <laughs> scamper away same <laughs> I love the boys I love the boys yeah yeah Griff goes with the boys awesome yeah it just probably like goes out a hallway and like you know the hallway probably just leads out a back like somewhere where a bunch of teenage boys would smoke weed that's kind of what I'm getting at here oh absolutely <laughs> uh, yeah to just go in and munch on this cake um, and and then yeah I feel like he he demasks and uh, you see this motherfucker's a human um, an, oh wow uh, yeah another guy demasks uh, he's a drow um, and another guy demasks so he's also a drow yep and yeah okay uh I guess I demask. Cool. Oh well, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're among friends here. So I'm, I'm Bobby Canale. Uh, you know, these are my boys. This right here. This is Pint. Um, yeah, and, and you see, he's kind of a young guy. Um, we, the audience, the, the, the cast, know Pint. Um, you, you don't. Uh, yeah, he's a drow. Um, a little, a little scrappy. Uh, definitely underfed. So you know, um, he's eyeballing the cake quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Oh uh, hi! Hey, nice to meet you. Uh, you, th you think I could, uh, I could, I could have a piece of that? Oh yeah, you betcha. Oh wow, well, well, man, thanks. He yoink takes the piece really quick. Um, and this, this is our bruiser, Feldspar. Hey, how you doing? I'm Feldspar. Puts a hand out. <laughs> <laughs> fucking gang of goons. God. <laughs> well, uh, uh, part pardon my asking, but um, what a uh, what 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 does a group of cooks need with a bruiser? <laughs> well, it's funny you mention that, my friend, because this happens to be recent employment. We're uh, we're actually somewhat of a you know we're freelancers, you know. Oh, I get you. And he does the big dumbest goofiest <laughs> wink. Uh, yeah, like the, the 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 kind where like his mouth is open and everything just huh. Yeah, you're getting it. You're understanding exactly what we're talking about. And, and Feldspar also gives you a giant, stupid, open mouth wink. 
Exactly. <laughs> You're getting what I'm saying. <laughs> and uh, he gives a big, stupid, open mouth wink, too. And uh, if you need any uh, assistance and maybe finding yourself in the employment of freelancing, maybe you can talk to us a little bit. Pint nods frantically. <laughs> um, <laughs> Griff, Griff, uh, Griff turns to like all three of them, like, so, um, would you, would you boys wink happen to be a wink on a job right now? Wink, wink. Hmm. Well, I mean, you know, we got plenty of meat to carve, um, produce and veg to carry, but I think we may actually have a little bit of a side activity we may be partaking it after the main course you know what i'm saying mm, well uh you know i'm uh i'm pretty handy we're gonna myself, steal things uh, oh oh okay, yeah no i i i i got that i i Feldsburg. think i got that what the, what, what what the heck These shitheads are my favorite characters <laughs> <laughs> You chose the right person to introduce these characters. Yep. <laughs> you just open palm wax feldspar in the chest. <laughs> ah, ah, I was just making sure it was clarified. It was fucking clarified, feldspar. <laughs> Pinned is like, guys, guys, come on, guys, guys. He's right there. Let's leave this for later. Yeah, uh, uh, mm-hmm. yeah we're going to be uh, making off with a couple party favors at the end, if you know what I'm saying. We're gonna steal them. Yeah, <laughs> yep, there it is. There it is. <laughs> I'm just clarifying. Yeah, no, I uh, clarified like butter. I get it. What? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like, like, clear. It's a baker thing. <laughs> clarified butter, like you. Clarified you, like you butter. clarify, but it, it's a it's a cake thing. You'll you'll get it one I day. I do not maybe. understand this field if, if of you're, study. If you're in the cake business, as long as I've been. <laughs> <laughs> Which has been about an hour and a half. Everybody, Cake boss. all three of the boys are just like gently nodding and understanding. Yeah, it's cake slang. You'll get used to it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, um, if uh, I may be a little uh, presumptuous, uh, what's the mark? Anything in particular, or just whatever's not nailed down? <laughs> We definitely have a plan to steal something cool. Oh, right, Bobby? Well, yeah, it just so happens that I have heard rumors. Whatever's powering that crazy sun thing in the middle has a pretty valuable fuel. So we figured we, you know, grab some untied down stuff in the meantime. And when everybody's busy enough in their little after parties, we just go sneak some off. You know what I'm saying? Um, oh man, Griff is in deep now. Oh man, he is, he is, pro, he is, uh, found himself immersed in two separate fictions. Uh. Um, oh man. So, uh, when, um, when, when are, when are you thinking about, uh, you know, going, going for it? I just, I just told you, man, when everything, when everything's, you know, after parties, after the main party, man. Oh, okay, okay, not like a, not like a set time, just, you know, when it, you know. When it dies down, I, I get it. I get it. Um, yeah. Well, uh, I'll uh, you uh, you let me know when uh, whenever that uh, that starts, and uh, you know, just give me the signal, and I'll uh, I'll uh, I'll make myself useful. And then around around now, the door that you guys came through like bursts open, and you see that same chef that uh, Bobby blew off earlier. What the fuck are you doing out here? Uh, sorry, sir. We were just taking our mandated break. Why did I tell you there's no? Sir? Get back in here. And you see, yeah, they all three sort of start shuffling towards the door, and Bobby, kind of at the back of the group, kind of turns, I will be seeing you soon, my friend. And he gives a terrible wink again, and puts his mask back on. <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> um, yeah, uh, oh, shoot. What am I gonna do? I guess I just, I go back to, go back to the servant of the party, and just sort of lie low and wait. Okay, fantastic. Back to your job. Yeah, you see everybody uh, doing their freaking job. Things are starting to slow down. Um, okay, everybody else at the party. Anything else you, you want to do? All kind of the, you're you're in the thick of it. Probably just gonna be like hanging on Patrickles' arm, seeing if I can overhear any useful tidbits from the Elfir elite. That okay. 
Yeah, he's probably taking you around pretty fast to a lot of banal, useless conversations about horse shit that does not matter. I'll just sort of placidly nod. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> introducing you over and over. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, wonderful. Oh, fascinating. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, or and you just keeping a respectful, you know, respectful distance and nodding as well. Yeah, pretty much. Fantastic. Yeah, so if you like, the party continues like this for a little while. Um, and, and then eventually... Um, somebody steps up on a little bit of a dais, kind of at the back of the, uh, the, the back of the room. Um, and, uh, dings, dings a glass, and the glass sort of, like, arcanely is far too loud, pierces the entire room. Like, a couple people too close to them, like, too close to the, the, uh, the person doing this, like, uh, visibly wins. Um, then yeah, it's Titus, he's, he's, he's dinging some sort of magic cup. Everyone, everyone, silence, please, I have an announcement, or... Should I more appropriately say, our guest of honor has an announcement. If everyone could please give the floor to Major Reeson. And, yeah, uh, applause, applause, applause. And, uh, yeah, Reeson stands up, um, and, uh, he's been sitting, clearly, he's at a big table. And, uh, he comes up to the dais, and uh, also, when, uh, when Titus was speaking, this glass clearly was holding, is amplifying his voice. Um, uh, and so he hands it over to Reeson, and Reeson starts mumbling, and the same thing, amplified. <clears throat> Hello. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to make this brief. I don't want to uh, take up too much of your time. Again, thank you all for coming. And I hope to serve all of you as well as you have served me tonight. I would like to, however, announce formally the Paladin's support for Deacon Heralds the Sunrise push for Archdeacon. He has the paladins behind him fully, and his beliefs as to where Aelfir society in the spire need go. Out from the grasp of the Everqueen. And you hear a soft gasp in the crowd, like a little bit of, like, yeah, like titillation. Like, oh, oh. Uh, thank you very much. And then he passes the cup over to Titus. And Titus looks shocked, like visibly shocked. And he shakes it off the moment um, Reeson passes off the cup. And I go, uh, uh, um. Well, yes, uh, uh, congratulations to, to Deacon Sunrise. And you see the man himself. He stands. Uh, it is Deacon Heralds the Sunrise. Um, he's wearing sort of the simple, um, you know, elegant vestments of, of, a, of, a, of a priest, you know, sort of like similar to our priest's um, long robe, uh, tight collar. Uh, but of course, I think it's it's sort of gently tinged with like a, a, a light orange, sort of like a, a sunrise. Uh, also, to uh, implicate his personal worship, of course, his his sort of focus uh, is um, a Brother Autumn, or so he publicly claims, uh, who is one of the least popular facets of you know the four facets of the Or Sun that the Solar Pantheon represent. Uh, and yeah, he has this this silver mask that is. A masterpiece, like a silver goblet, just hand filigreed, clearly, and pressed into this solemn, like, a Mount Rushmore-esque, like, focused face. Um, and, uh, yeah, it, it rests over a, a shaved head. Um, and he's extremely, extremely thin. Um, and, and he, raves, he raises a hand, gives a wave, and uh, he, there, there's, like, a light applause, but you can tell it doesn't have the same fervor that, like, the applause for um, recent was. And, yeah, Titus kind of claps along and passes the cup off to an attendant and clearly looks immediately, if you kind of keep your eyes on, pissed as shit, and begins to uh, storm off talking to attendant down a hallway. And, yeah, the party begins to slowly wind back up. Patrick Lee turns to you, Willow. That was certainly an interesting chain of events. Well, I'd certainly say so, especially judging by the audience reaction. Uh... Now, it looks like from his clothes that he worships at the Temple of Brother Autumn. Didn't you say that you did too, Patrocles? Yes, he is the traditional patron of the Paladins. It is rare, though, for a deacon to continue worship. Undying surgery is wildly popular among our kind, and it stands in direct abomination to Brother Autumn and his teachings of natural death and cycle. I see. Have you seen uh, Deacon Harold's the sunrise around before then? Around the temple to Brother Autumn? Mm, he's been around. He's a regular patron and a generous one, but us, Brother Autumn, uh, worshippers worship in the same temples, same solar basilica as the rest, eh? Mm, right. Sorry. 
No, 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 no. Your ignorance is charming as ever. Well, well, I'll <clears throat> take that as a compliment. <laughs> he looks over at Deacon at Sunrise and kind of holds his holds his gaze for a while. Or not, I mean, Sunrise isn't looking at him, but yet he looks at him for a while. He's a strange one. What do you know about him? Exceedingly little. He appeared out of nowhere, claiming to come from up north. His personal history is nothing but a mystery beyond his service to the Basilica. It makes Reeson's choices here, if I'm being honest, Little Willow, quite interesting. Held the Sunrise hasn't had any connection with anybody before this? Any? No, no, I mean, he's a regular deacon, understands the community, uh, prays with Wynne, uh, assists with Basilica, of, uh, you know, B- Basilica go-ons, etc. But he keeps his cards close to his chest. Other than his northern heritage, he doesn't seem to want to have much known about him, and he doesn't have an accent, which is exceedingly strange for coming from as far north as he claims. Everqueen's Palace. My, from the Everqueen's Palace itself. Well, I'd certainly expect someone from around there to have picked up a dialect at some point. Exactly. It makes his story very peculiar. And to the handful of Everqueen diehards that still remain among Spire, he is... Well, he is... Quite frankly, a uh, outcast. An aberrant. Hmm. Hmm. This is all very strange. I'm honestly interested to know more about this Deacon Herald's the Sunrise now. Uh, hmm. Not Certainly not before this. Um, I... Well, perhaps I'll introduce you, young Willow. Oh, could you? Well, I think I'd quite like that, dear Patrocles. Well... Whatever you want, darling. <laughs> Come. Let's make a Simp! Oh, absolutely. Uh, and yeah, he kind of leads you over. And you see, like, several people are, are kind of talking or trying to talk to, to Sunrise, and uh, Patrocles just literally kind of pushes his way in front of people. Excuse me! Deacon, it is a pleasure to uh, be supporting you in this surprising little election. Yeah, you see, Deacon turns from talking to someone else and he's got a he's got a thin face like an exceedingly thin face almost like soulless from dragon age inquisition um right even through the mask you can tell that he has like a, a yeah i mean if, if the expression is to be trusted that's carved into his mask um, he has an extremely severe angular face and judging by like the edges of his jaw that you can you know see from underneath and all that stuff uh, yeah just just an angular man um and he uh I think I think um, this this expression mask. I think it, it it's only from the nose up, and then from um, the nose down. There's like sort of this translucent material, um, almost like glass, but something that sort of allows you to see more of his jaw and his mouth and his expressions. Um, he's fucking not having facial expressions. Uh, no, because that's the mask. Uh, uh, but yeah, you can still see it has like uh, the same like edifice of, of a carved solemn expression. Um, but yeah, and you see he cracks like a small thin smile. <laughs> I see. Your enthusiasm hasn't changed in the slightest, Patrocles. And who is your young friend here? Ah, uh, it is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. I am Breeze Through the Willow. Uh, congratulations on your recent endorsement, uh, Deacon. Thank you. It is an unexpected honor, but one I will accept willingly. Uh, I hear you hail from the north as well. <laughs> Yes, I do. I thought I recognized your accent. Ah, speaking of accents, it seems that you haven't got one yourself. Uh, why might that be, if I might ask? And he smiles even wider. I'm a bit of an idiosyncrat. <laughs> Not originally from far north. Ah, really? Yeah. I don't like discussing myself. Please, please, please. Oh, please, no. I uh, Personal details, I completely understand. I wouldn't want to overstep any boundaries. I do thank you for taking the time out to speak with me in the first place. Well, don't be too obsequious now, Willow, eh? Our good friend Deacon Sunrise here is a guest just the same as us. And, yeah, you see, the Deacon nods. Correct. I am simply a guest as well. And like our friend Patrick Lee's here, simply a servant of the people. That's... Tell me... 
Are you attending Titus's little after party? I was considering it. It's certainly been a stressful past few days. I could certainly use the stress relief, hmm? I certainly would think as such. Please, I'll escort you myself. There won't be any danger, Deacon. I have to keep Willow here safe. I can certainly add you to the ducket. <laughs> and, I mean, Patrickles, if you find yourself overloaded, you know, I can always, I always have my bodyguard, Orin. He's always good for that, too, as well. Oh, worry not. I'm simply making conversation. There won't be too much danger at present. I'm simply trying to make our friend Sunrise a little more comfortable, eh? After all, why else would you uh, make yourself so scarce? I don't know if I've seen you at any of these soirees. Sunrise? You see, he, uh, he uh, smirks. Well, I, as you may have been able to garner from my little achievement tonight, I've been a little busy. And, and Patrickles nods. So you have. So you have. I'll be seeing you soon, Deacon. My pleasure. Patrickles. Willow. A mm. pleasure to meet you. Likewise. Mm. And yeah, it turns to one of the many other people that, yeah, trying to chat. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, Patrickles <laughs> leads you away. Uh. <laughs> Sh shivering a little. So, Net, after all of this goes down. Um, are, are you doing anything in particular? I mean, despite, you know, soothing Willow, uh, um, Sinet is being more cautious than she was before, keeping her eye out for anyone that is looking at her, uh, trying to track eyes and whatnot, but still meandering through the crowd, l listening for tidbits of information that may or may not exist. You absolutely catch somebody repeatedly looking at you. A little scrappy shithead working at the carpentry table. Um, I don't know if you can recognize him from his body language or whatever, um, especially because he's masked, um, but you can definitely notice he keeps looking at you. And at the very least, you recognize his height, right? Okay. Um, you no, know it's Seth's just going to walk up to him. Yeah. Uh, can I help you, ma'am? I don't know. Can you? Maybe if you want some uh, some carved meat. I would love some. Uh, okay. And he goes and he yeah gets like a little porcelain plate and asks one of the chef and the chef begins to shave some meat off onto like a, a little flatbread. And he just kind of keeps nervously like whipping his head back looking at you and then like looking back at the plate. I'm like, uh... Would you like some toppings, Miss Sinet? Oh. Oh, I would. And after that, you can tell me how you know my name. It's... Uh, he lifts up his mask. It's me, Miss Sinet. I, I, I'm sorry. Hey, Pent. I'm just trying to make some money, Miss Sinet. Please don't yell at me. What? Why do you think I would yell at you? I don't know, because I'm an amaranth? Uh, you know. No, Pint, I, I do not mind that you're trying to better yourself, financially or otherwise. Oh. Whew. Well, that's early. I'm just, I'm actually curious on how you knew it was me. I also have a mask on. Uh, Miss Annette, there aren't a whole lot of, uh, tall, peculiar, dre peculiar, pe weirdly dressed ladies with forearms around. As everyone keeps reminding me, I... It's, it's natural for me, okay? I... It's like, it's like, you have two arms, I have four, it's... I don't think about it too often. Well, I, 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 it's cool, I mean, everybody thinks it's cool, Miss Annette, but it's just, it's de it's like, it's a you thing. Yeah, I, I forget it stands out, you're right. Are you having a good time at the party? And you're like, yeah, slides slides the plate over, yeah, with like a, a dress, like sort of, yeah, a, a spire euro, like a, a equivalent. Hell yeah. What's, what are the ingredients in a spire euro? Fucking chickpeas, bitch. Spire lamb. It's, it's a goat, dude. It's, it's a rare goat. 
and you know some probably some mushrooms and some some fresh vegetables from the garden district uh, probably some some chopped lettuce you know maybe maybe some special spire destera pepper maybe some like you know aliquam Ooh. herbs uh, thank you pent um can't say that i do enjoy the party didn't exactly seem like your sort of place uh not really but an acquaintance of mine invited me and i was remiss to decline well you know try to enjoy yourself while you're here the food's pretty good and i'm sure there's you know, there's got to be at least you know one one kind of cool person to hang out with uh, you could be right pent i'll leave you to your work okay well if you want some more uh, carved meat i'm i'm here <laughs> Uh, good luck with that. And, uh, yeah. Pent will, uh, carry on her way. Pent will carry on her way. <laughs> so what'd I say? You said Pent will carry on her way. I will carry on my way. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so Nat's gonna, gonna go on her way back into the crowd, continuously looking for people who are staring at her, because apparently that's a thing. You What's are- wrong with four arms, guys? It's- just it's normal okay anywho um but she also keeps a uh pent in the corner of her eye at all times okay cool uh awesome yeah i i think uh i don't think you're going to be getting the best information in terms of who's looking at you because yeah i think you stand out i think people tend to look at you and people uh, yeah i think some pretentious ale fear you know stop you every once in a while like, oh for um, a midwife are you you know this sort of bullshit when you clap, can you do your own round of applause? <laughs> I would like to hear that. I, I haven't heard that one before. Please go on. Etc. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So, Gertrisa, do, do you do anything during this party other than sort of just, you know, stumble around with the dog being yeah. a little bit? Not, not your I dig, think... I get you. <laughs> yeah, I think after... After... Uh, a couple minutes, she gets bored watching Willow. Um, and she just, like, sits down like, in a corner. Uh, and, uh, I think she's just talking to Belvin. <laughs> Aww. Give right. her some of that. Now, Alec, do a Scooby-Doo voice for Belvin. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> please. <laughs> no, we've already established Bob has to make the Belvin noises, because he's great oh, at right. it. God right. damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, those. Uh, that that cancer to the ears. I, 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 I forgot that uh, we established a hyena sound like a man going, God damn it! <laughs> Very frustrated. <laughs> Guaranteed hyena noises every session. That's in, it's in Bob's contract. Fun in every box. Yeah, uh, Gertrice is just sitting down in a corner. Uh, if there's like a bench or something... Uh, like up against a wall, she's just sitting there, people watching. Uh, yeah, just ranting uh, to Belvin, just sitting there. Uh, oh, Belvin, I never really saw the appeal of the of these sort of shindigs, these these hootenannies. I, uh, you know, Belvin, I never I never really saw the the trouble of just gathering a few friends to sell it. If if it were if it were me be, being promoted to major, I would simply gather a few a few old friends into into the house and simply sit around the fire and tell stories. <laughs> yes, yes, I know, Belvin. It really is. It really is. these kinds of displays really are upsetting. It's, it's sad that people can't enjoy the simpler pleasures of life nowadays. Now, Belvin, what did I tell you about language? That's right. Good boy. And, yeah, I feel like, yeah, at this point, you guys <laughs> see the party is beginning to trickle down. Uh, it's clearly beginning to end. Titus, uh, looking exhausted, sort of, like, reclining over two chairs, fa- having somebody fan him, uh, fed grapes, you know, this sort of thing. And, yeah, guests are beginning to leave. Patrick Lee turns to you, Willow. 
I think we are beginning to near the after-party stage of this particular party. Oh, exciting. Yes. If I may say so, I believe this will be the most exciting part of the evening. Well, why is that? You'll know. Oh? O is correct. Okay. He kind of looks around. Uh, you see some other people that are starting to gather over near Titus. Well, it seems we're beginning to strike up the band. That's not the right phrase, but I'm going to stick with it. Let's uh, make our way over there, Willow. Okay, uh, should I be prepared for anything, you, you know? Uh, do you have any guns or knives? Any any spells you could cast, perhaps? Uh, should, should I? Eh, it would be useful. Oh. It'll make your participation a little more active. Participation? Yes. It's an after party, Willow. We're not sitting around doing a jig. It's well, entertainment. Well, are we going to be fighting each other, or...? No, not each other. Don't be ridiculous. This isn't some bizarre blood sport. Well, not our blood. <laughs> you didn't like that one. Um, uh, yeah, um, uh... Titus! <laughs> mm, yes? How close are we to making our way over? Just a moment. Leave me be for a second. It's been a rather taxing evening. Yes, yes, yes. Well, let's forget about it and make way. The hunt calls, my friend. <sighs> Fine, Titus. Whatever. Give me a moment. And he stands up, stands up, brushes himself off. Everyone, disperse. Get people to start cleaning. I'm tired. We're wrapping this thing up early. And he makes his way. And yeah, you see Elsbeth, uh, yeah, kind of. Follows behind him for a second, then calls out to him, and then you see them privately talk for a second, and they split. Hmm. Hmm. Actually, uh, Patrocles, I... I'm afraid I don't have a very strong stomach, uh, so... If, if this is going to be, you know, quite brutal, I'm afraid it's not really going to be... Oh, no, no, no. It won't be brutal. Uh, it will be elegant. Trained. We are masters of the craft, Willow. No backing out now, darling. He pats you on the arm and tightens his grip on, like, your arm and his. Uh, I feel like she, like, casts one last, like, look over at Elsbeth, like, you know, wishing. Mm -hmm. And then she, like, looks looks back at Patrick, please, and nods. And, like, looks down at the floor. Yeah. Excellent. And, uh, yeah, he begins to lead you out uh, of, 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 this, of this castle and then... Uh, yeah, I mean, out of the out of the bubble begins to you know lead you down some pathways, or no, no, I feel like maybe there's some carriages. There's a carriage outside, um, and you see, you know, Titus is uh, kind of in the front in a big winter coat, um, and yeah, you see, there's a couple people with him. Uh, the attendant that uh, you noticed was super nervous is with you. Um, Deacon Harold's the sunrise is in the back of this carriage uh, along with uh, two attendants, and uh, yeah, and then I think there's one other person that you don't recognize. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, however, we're going to uh, jump over to Griff. Yeah, so the party begins to wind down and, uh, you know, people begin to trickle out. And, yeah, you see in the distance, uh, Bobby gives you gives you a big wink uh, on, uh, through his mask. Uh, and as things begin to slow down and they begin to unpack, uh, you notice somebody disappear. Or not, I mean, you notice somebody. You notice somebody slip out of the building, essentially. You only notice him on his way out because uh, mm -hmm. he seems like he's making himself pretty scarce. That's Mr. Gunter's out. Oh, oh my goodness. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> I'm definitely going to follow him. Okay, fantastic. Um, yeah, and I think uh, as you start to slip away, Lewis kind of calls out, Well, hold on there, boy. Where, where are you going now? We're, we're packing everything up. Oh, uh, just, 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 just a second. Uh, my, um, uh, so I've, uh, I've got a, uh, re respiratory thing. I need, you know, all this cigar smoke in here. It's really doing a number on me. If I could just, oh. I'll just, I'll just be a, be a second outside. Well, if it's a health issue, boy, you take your time now. Th thank you. And I, I, you know, scuttle along. Yeah, I, I think you can follow Mr. Gunderson pretty easily. Um, I presume you're not trying to make yourself known, or, or are you? Or? Um... I I guess for for like the first little bit of it, I'm just tailing him, um, seeing like if he's like like what is what is he doing here? Like, is it safe to call out to him? Just okay. just seeing what he's doing. 
Yeah, he's, he's making his way out, and as you continue to follow him, you see, yeah, he's making his way into this huge, ornate carriage. Um, that, yeah, has several other, and you can see probably sunrise through the window, um, and, and, yeah, several other people, uh, paladin, uh, you know, two paladins. Um, I don't think Reeson is with them, but, um, yeah, his attendants are. Ah, so Mr. Gunter's Sound is getting into a carriage with all these, all these, uh, very, very highly esteemed, high-ranking people. Oh, yeah. Uh, absolutely. And and Titus is in there as well. And Mr. Gunterzound is with someone um, who I don't... He wasn't walking with him at first. Um, and I don't know if you recognize him. Um, how, how well do you feel like Griff knows the, like, upper parts of the hierarchy um, of, of the newspaper that you work for? Um, I think given his, like investigatory nature i think he he would know the big players um but he like but that's pretty much it like he wouldn't know like middle management or like underlings or anything he would he would like know uh like who runs who runs what like who is the who is like the face of this yeah so i think you recognize this guy um this is one of the head editors of the entire paper um you can tell by his like almost icy blue skin veined through. You know he's undying. This is uh, Mister Yarl, uh, one of one of the moneyed centers um, of yeah of your newspaper. Oh man, what are they doing? What could they be doing right now? It appears they're just getting um, in a cart, and I feel like around now, I feel like you see Willow pass on the arm of Patrick Lee's heading towards the same carriage. Oh, by the way, is uh, is Orin coming with us? Like, is he letting? That's up to Orin. That's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. I think so. Cool. So yeah, and you also see Oren um, at, at the same time, uh, them sort of beginning to approach this carriage. Oh man, oh man, uh, I definitely don't like. I I don't I I pretend not to notice Willow uh, like at all. Okay. Um, Oren, I feel like you're pretty. I like you're pretty. Uh, I, I don't know if I want to make you roll. I feel like you're, but Oren's a super observant, observ- observant guy, and he's also not doing anything else but paying attention. Yeah. So I feel like yeah, maybe, I think Oren has just been scanning. So maybe I feel like you could see Griff, and also Griff's still in uniform, kind of that absurd pastel uniform. So as much as you know, the bright, yeah, the bright pink. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm I, I'm not I'm not trying to hide. I'm just trying to like not make it known yeah. that I know these folks. Yeah, I don't think you look too conspicuous. I mean, there's plenty of insane outfits yeah. that attendants and stuff are wearing, but. I think yeah. he, if, if he's looking for you, he can find you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think once he catches sight of Griff, I think Orin will do kind of like, kind of catch him, look away, and then do like an inquisitive head tilt and then nod in the direction that we're heading and just wait and then glance back over the shoulder to look at Griff again, like see what his response is. Um, <laughs> Griff sees him doing this like zero dark 30 <laughs> and uh, <laughs> head head gesture. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Griff Griff just waves at him. <laughs> cool. Yeah, he'll just wave back. Thumbs up. God. Uh the 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 okay signal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Like I said, I'll give a thumbs up. Double thumbs just, up. Uh, Double thumbs up finger guns. Hell yeah. Excellent. Then yeah, uh yeah, I'll just keep following after Willow then. You know, they- how how far away is Orin from Griff? Mm, probably like 20 30 feet, I'd imagine. Oh, that's, that's all super right close. he like no no he doesn't say anything he doesn't say anything <laughs> <laughs> okay so I, f- I otherwise i do feel like patrick lee's and willow close the distance are you gonna try to intercede or anything there me yes sir oh with uh with patrick lee's and willow because mm-hmm. that was the moment i was trying to give you access to if that makes sense oh um yeah uh I guess to play it like truthfully, I don't think Griff would have like would like know what to do in that situation. Like I don't. That's perfect for me. No, I mean if Griff doesn't have a scheme, he doesn't have a scheme. Yeah, yeah, because I I I I figured he uh he was so committed to the um the the servant bit that I don't think he has an in for. Oh, how do I talk to upper crust people? How do I mm-hmm. like? How do I make okay. it not like a a, a major faux pas? To, to to talk to Willow or to talk to even Patrickles like at that point I don't I I think that is, that is a a task he is leaving for his um uh for for Willow for his compatriot who has uh dead like made themselves uh the role of uh, a higher society person yeah okay 
and then yeah in that case i, I think that uh willow and patrick Lee's cross the distance and yeah he helps you up into this carriage it's pretty roomy i mean i think it's one of those huge like ornate like russian like height of russian golden era carriages like four do- like four Ooh. doors you know um and Oren, as you begin to approach uh, patrick Lee's uh, turns and holds a hand out sorry friend i'm afraid you don't have a ticket to ride this particular vehicle. Oh, uh, Patrick Lee's earlier, you said that Oren could come with me to to this after party. Was, was Did that... I? I must have been drinking. I'm sorry, Oren. If we were riding in other circumstances, I'm sure it would be appropriate. But uh, you understand the deacon and all. Well, uh, in that case, perhaps you wouldn't think me rude if I stayed behind with my bodyguard. I just, after all, I am a lady. and That would be most unfortunate. It's fine. No, uh, p- perhaps you could follow behind on foot, eh? That's a bit cruel. Cool. There's room in the carriage, isn't there? It's an etiquette thing. Okay. It's all right, Willow. These boots are comfy enough. Okay. Hmm. There it is. A man of virtue. I appreciate your candor. Enjoy your ride. We will. Uh, you're just gonna wanna follow the carriage. We're making our way to the the heart bubble. Uh, it's it's uh, about another bubble over. It'd be a bit of a trek, but I assure you, there will be quite the scenic views. Wonderful. And he <laughs> closes the carriage door. Um, fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's nice. Uh, okay. I uh, and uh, so Sonette. Gratrisa, what are you, what are you guys doing as the party's winding down? Um, I'm ass- I'm assuming the paladin Reese went with the carriage as well. Reeson did not. Reeson, Reeson did not. Okay. Mm-mm. Um, is he just hanging out at the party still? Right now, he's still talking to people. Yeah, sort of. Yeah, yeah greeting the last of you know, the last of the guests that needed to talk to him and stuff. Um, he only has one of his attendants um, that were with him. The other two, once again, have gone uh, along. Along with everybody else at that after party, um, but yeah, he's still there. I I I want Sonette to greet him as well. Yeah, okay. I, I think you know crowds are pretty sparse. He's probably just sort of like after a play, where right? he just sort of casually chatting with people. Um, and as you approach, uh, I feel like he gives you a, a short little bow. Congratulations, Captain Reese. I am a major now, Maji, but thank you for your congratulations. Ah, Major, I apologize. Not too familiar with the Paladin Order. But, as one of the midwives, uh, our group wishes to give you your due. Hmm. Yeah. Thank you for the respect. You know, you say you don't know much about Paladins. Well, don't happen to know very much about midwives either. So, perhaps we have much more to learn from each other than we think. Perhaps so. So, so. Uh, who do you serve? Who do uh, uh, among the community? Are you, are you a local? I, I am. I, I assist in some of the more underclass neighborhoods. Hmm. Noble. Noble. More just a part of the job. Well, thank you for what you do for the citizens here. There aren't enough people helping. Yes, I I make it a mission of mine to protect each and every one of them, even those who stray or vanish. I care about them all. It can be hard sometimes. I'm sure it can. It's difficult in our line of business. We do a similar thing. I am just perhaps a bit more blunt about it. hmm? That does seem to fit your personality, from what I've seen so far. (laughs) Well, to keep her being straightforward. Of course. So, now that you are major, do you have any plans? Your speech was quite something. Thank you. Yes, we are throwing our lot behind the deacon. I think that if Sunrise was able to find himself in a position of power, he could make some real changes to the city. Oh. What kind of changes are you looking for? Kind of swills his drink. Maji, I, I feel as if I can... Be candid with you. Oh, do. I am, as you may have sensed from my little speech, not exactly a fan of the Ever Queen or of Northern Presence in general. Ah, uh, Messe, I can't say that I know much of the politics of the North. It's 
It's a tangle of fools and ego. Normal business among the elf here, am I correct? <laughs> Does not sound too different than the spire? <laughs> yes, not too different, but the balance is weighted elsewhere. Luckily with the council, there is something of uh, counteraction here, but the Ever Queen, the grasp on the north is whole, and for good reason. Sunrise offers something else. Like I said, I, I do not know the politics of the North. My hope is that you never will. <laughs> uh, I do hope so as well. I just hope the drow in this little new world of yours don't get the short end of the stick. <laughs> no. No. I don't think the order that Sunrise is proposing is one that will be harsher to the drow than the one we've already established. I see. Then you have displaced any concerns that I have. Hmm. I like to hear that from you. What was your name? Ah, my name is Sinet. Well, Maji Sinet. It is a genuine honor to meet you. And you see, he's very intently looking at you. And I feel like at this point he tries to shake your one of your hands, right? I think, uh, I think Sinet will go ahead and shake it as well. Cool, yeah. So he takes yeah, your hand in, like, both of his hands in a sort of, like, cradling way. You seem an exceptional woman, Miss Mushy Sinet. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you, f- you flatter me, Miss Say Resin. Reason. Reason, I... I'm sorry. I keep saying Reese, then resin. No, you're good. Uh, this is my job is to make it as hard as possible for you to remember my names that I throw at you. <laughs> and yeah, I feel like he finally releases your hand. Before that, before he releases, um, I want to use a particular skill of the midwives, uh, similar to Willow's skill. It's called Protector's Eye. And I feel I feel like uh, Sinet does it through touch. Okay, um... Once per session, ask the GM what a particular NPC wishes to protect above all else. Ooh. Wowzers. That's that's a very good God, one. That's yeah. such, God, this game rules. Um, oh, man, that's cool as hell. <laughs> so awesome. What does Reason in this moment want to protect above all else? In this moment? You. Ooh. Ship. <laughs> Just like distantly echoing. Yeah. I, I think I think I think Sinet kind of just her her brain like blanks for a second. Just like wait, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so that the the handhold is just like a couple seconds longer than it should. It's kinda like Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Are you well? Have I upset you? Ah, oh. ah, oh, sorry. Ah, uh, what were you saying? I, I sort of got caught up in your words. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, Marjorie well, Sinet, that is just fine. Uh, <clears throat> I was simply asking what your plans were for the rest of the evening. Oh, nothing t- too terribly entertaining. Um, once the party had ended, I was, I was going to check the brood at home like I do every night. But besides that, I have nothing else to do. Check the, the brood at home? eh? Yes. Uh, you are aware of drow, uh, childbirth? Ah, the brood, of course, the brood. <laughs> my my apologies, I thought you said you were uh, <clears throat> your brute at home. I uh, simply was... Uh, ah, uh, uh, brood. Ah, yes, well, that's, yes, that's far more uh, reasonable. Well, if that doesn't take up the entirety of your evening, uh, I found this party to not exactly be to my taste. But maybe if you were to accompany me to a little bit of a after party, it could be a little closer to my liking. I think I will take you up on that offer. And yeah, like visibly kind of brightens. Hmm. Well, I, 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 
glad to hear that. I will be waiting here. I have a few more faces to see, and then we will make our way. I'm going to have a just a, a small get-together with Elsbeth, Titus's wife. She has a beautiful, beautiful little personal estate over in the, uh, I believe it is some Eastern arcology-themed bubble, something like that. Sounds like a joy. Uh, I will go and grab me some more of those little crackers, I have to say. They are quite a delight. They are a delight. I fully agree. Yeah, um, that's me. Cool. I I feel like he, yeah, just kind of turns and uh, starts to greet other people, kind of ch- sneaking glances back. Um, it. All right. Uh, let's see here. Don't play with my emotions. That's right. I'm here. <laughs> I'm I'm so here for this. Couple. I love this. I'm here. To that seemed fucking rules. This is so sweet. Is very sweet. Oh man, I feel like a little girl again. I know. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I. This is like watching Little Women for the first time. I know. Again. Oh, you're fucking right. I'm giddy. <laughs> I'm so giddy. I'm here to bring the TRPG <laughs> intercharacter romance tastefully. All right, this is my specialty. Um, <laughs> watch me fuck it up. All right, so uh, <laughs> uh, Oren, Griff, Gertrisa. These mm-hmm. are the people I'm interested in right now. Yeah, who do oh, I okay. fall in love with? <laughs> <laughs> Belvin. Yeah, platonic. I, I give platonic. Belvin a little kiss on the head. Mm. Nice. Apropos of nothing, just so just love him. Yeah, just love my boy. Uh, so yeah, maybe you, you see, uh, you know, Sinet having this encounter in the Distunions, uh with uh, with Reason. Yeah, I think I think Gertrisa feels a very strong urge to to insert herself into the conversation, but she holds herself back, uh, remembering what uh, what Sinet said about subtlety. Okay, nice. I think that's probably the best decision. I'm surprised she made it, but I'm glad she did. Uh, so, uh, once everybody's starting to trickle out, are you gonna follow the crowd out? Are you gonna wait for uh, for Sonette to leave, or what's your plan here? Yeah, I think uh, I feel like Gertrisa uh, is gonna go back to following um, is gonna go back to following Willow's scent. Okay. Yeah, I feel like yeah, it takes you straight out of the castle, out of the courtyard, and. Yeah, you see these carriage tracks that you're clearly beginning to follow, and I feel like, um, I feel like that will probably be around the same time as like the the end of like the carriage beginning to take off um, in the distance. So, Griff, what are you? Uh, what do you do after you kind of see the little carriage scene go down? Um, I guess I guess I have two questions. One is the uh, the the carriage that had Mister Gunther Zound and all the the important folks. Mm-hmm. Is that still here? Or has has that gone? It's taken off? off right now. Okay. Um, oh, right now? Yep. You can chase it and reach it if you wanted to. Okay. Um, second question. Uh, this was, this is Titus's home, correct? Yeah, his garden. Okay. And Titus, Titus was the one throwing the party, not the one who made the announcement that the paladins are supporting Harold. Yeah, no. Reason was the one that did that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Titus is throwing the party for Reason, uh, and then Reason made an announcement that, yeah, okay. paladins are supporting. Yeah, that changes supporting. things. If this were Reason's house, I would think, oh, maybe I can pilfer his uh pilfer his area, pilfer his 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 quarters and maybe pick up a note or two. But uh no. Um hmm, Titus seemed just as surprised or Titus seemed pretty surprised that that Harold the Sunrise was even involved. Um so <sighs> Okay, so are you going to um, yeah, shoot yeah, just, just uh Make a decision. Uh, I have I have many leads I could follow. Oh, yes, you do. Um, Flomp at this in party. this split second, I could I could try to tail the carriage. I could go back inside and get in on the heist. Um, I still have something to deal with with Lewis. I feel uh, I oh. feel Oren as if you could probably see Griff uh, again in the distance, like caught in this like Zach Galifianakis in the Hangover doing the math brain thing, like looking around, <laughs> like, doing, like, trying to calculate where to go <laughs> just by himself. You can hear him very quietly just. Uh, um, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, I'll walk over to him. Uh, uh <laughs> hey, Griff, you doing all right over here? Uh, hey, hey there, uh, citizen. Uh, would you care for a treat? 
Yes. I would love a I treat. I give him the big dumb wink. <laughs> wink. Hello there, strangers. I don't know you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <clears throat> and she's um she's winking. What, what are you what are you lovely folks up to? I was just out walking my service dog. I, I grab them both by the collar. Quick, look me in the eye. Should I follow that carriage or not? Yes. I was going to follow the carriage. All right. As soon as he says yes, I start like, I like get low to the ground and start booking it towards the, towards the carriage. If, if not too much time has passed, like if it's still in the process of like leaving, it hasn't yeah, I think gone away in our I still think you can see it in the distance. Yeah. It'll take a second. You, you won't catch up with it for a while, but yeah, you can see it in the distance. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. I'm committed. Griff takes the fuck off. I, I am just as indecisive about this decision as Griff was. Come on, be indecisive. Make rash decision. Okay. Cool. So, uh, Oren, are you gonna follow Griff? Katrice, are you gonna follow? Yeah, I think I'm gonna. Fo- I'm. I think I'm gonna hop on top of, uh, Belvin and, uh, yeah, follow along as well. Little, little lady ran her doggy. Are they? Are they? Is this? Is this carriage also headed to the after party? Uh, yes. Okay, then yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll. I guess I'll. Could I hitch a ride, Gertrisa? Why you? You are a a, a big burly fellow. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. What do you say, Belvin? And uh, she. She kind of uh, whispers to him for a second, and then she gestures, yeah, for, uh, for Oren to get on. Great, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's a big magic dog. He's a big magic dog. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you two can ride on it, uh, Griff. You just sort of gotta, just gotta jog. Um, hold on. <laughs> I, <laughs> I mean, if. Uh, if they're going to the same after party, like if we're all going to the same place. Yeah. The only other after party, there are two in play right now. There's okay. Titus. Yeah. There's, yeah. There's Titus and, um, like the, the, the one that you guys just witnessed kind of bunk up all these kind of famous people. And then there's the other one, which uh, is where Reason is going and where Elspeth is going. Um, this one, uh, Willow is also invited to separately, but she, she declined okay. and went, yeah, went with, uh, Patrick Queens. I'm just so conflicted because if they're going to that one, and then they can cover and that. Then of course, one. you also know what's going on back in the banquet hall between uh, Bobby and and uh, Feldspar and Pent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I <sighs> do. I want to get involved with Bobby. I don't know. Do you? Oh, I wish I was more decisive. It's all right. That's the game. Yeah, I. Okay, what? I'm gonna make this play. Um, because I, I based my character sort of of like, he, he does, he's doing, he's doing this like based on just reading a, a, a shit ton of adventure rags Half and Stin horror uh, swash. Yeah. Swashbuckle tales and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he is super down to go swashbuckle, uh, with some, with some thieves and, and go, go thievering, uh, th- th- thieve from some, some rich asshole. Uh, so you know what I think as uh, like he started to run towards the carriage out of um, obligation, but as soon as he saw his other compatriots running tor- towards it much faster, um, yeah. he was on like, the back okay, of that's, a giant dog, that's yeah. covered. I'm going to go swashbuckle. All right. <laughs> Griff turns on his heel. I feel like. He- <laughs> and also a, a sort of in the back of his head, like tugging at his heartstrings, like I can't just leave. Lewis without saying goodbye or giving him an excuse. Like I gotta, you know. Yeah, of course. Gotta gotta wrap up that thread. Okay, awesome. So let's just uh, let's follow that for a second. Um, okay. Yeah. So you, you go back inside. Um, you can see most people have almost made it out. Um, a handful of stragglers. Uh, Reason is still clearly uh, you know here talking. Sinet, I don't know. Maybe has made her way out. Maybe is still hanging out. Um. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, you see at the back, almost packed up, uh, is, uh, Lewis Harold and the other attendant for the, his cakes almost packed up. Uh, Lewis waves you on. Okay. Uh, are you all right, my lad? Yeah, just, uh, whew, um, you, you would not believe it, but 
You know, the man I was telling you about, the, the, the mob fella? Oh, yes. He was here. Oh, Lord, my lad. Well, did he see you? He did. He did, and he accosted me. Oh, oh, oh. Are you okay, lad? I, I'm fine, but my sister, she, she, she... I told him, I told him that I was, I was going to get him the money today, that, that, that at the end of the day I would come by and, and I'd give him the money and they'd let my sister go and it, and it, it would all just be dandy. Of course, of course. But, 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 but what happened, boy? Spit it out. But the cruel man, he wanted more. Oh, he wanted so much more. I he could give you more. I could give you more, lad. What, what did he no, tell no, you? No, no, you don't understand. He's taking my sister away from the spire. Oh, what? Where I will never be able to see her again unless I go after her. You have to, boy. You have to go after her. That's your, that's your darn sister. I know. I, I looked deep within my heart and I told myself, I'm leaving this life behind and I'm going to find my sister. And we're going we're gonna to travel out to the coast. And we're going to live out our lives mob free. I tell you, boy. I tell you. He reaches into his coat, produces uh, like a sack of coins, and starts counting them. I tell you, boy. I'm gonna pay you. I'm gonna pay you right here. I'm gonna pay you right here. And you're gonna go and you're gonna chase your damn sister. You're gonna chase your damn sister. And when you find her, you're gonna come back to Lewis's cakes, and I'm gonna bake you the biggest damn cake you ever had, boy. Is this um? Is this is this just a day's wage? Uh, it's maybe a little more. <laughs> I I reach into it and I give him back like. I give him back anything that's more than a day's wage. <laughs> no, no, boy. Come I d- on. I do not. W- come on. No, I. Look, this isn't about money anymore. No amount of money will placate these bastards. <laughs> but you got to go on an adventure, boy. Uh, this is for your travels. I, I'm trying to get you started on the road right. You you need this. All right. I, I grab it and I look him in. I look him in his eyes. A little a little tear forms in the corner. Um, half of it acting and half of it very truly real. Um, sir, you have done me a kindness no one has ever done. I will pay this back. Tenfold I will pay this back. And I, I, I sprint out the, out the doors that I just came out of. Farewell, lad. And you're gone. (laughs) Um, and uh, when I get outside, I, I turn around the building and uh, from my little pack, I get out my 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 uh, my uh, uh, my uh, red snare outfit, and I change into my red snare outfit. It, can I can I am I able to do that undetected? Am I am I able to find a little place like that? Okay, like a little corner. I, I kind of want I kind of want this scene where you sprint out and you're running and, you, and like you turn a corner and you think that you're safe, right? And then like you start to get undressed, and then you oh, hear. Are you looking for somewhere to hide, little boy? Oh, uh, oh, uh, Jean, Jean Paul. Yeah, um, I was, I, I just needed a, just a, just a little place to, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, uh catch, ca- ca- catch my breath and, uh, you know, change. Um, uh, this, I got a little, uh, dirty. I, I needed, um. Shh. Quiet yourself, little boy. You do not have to lie to me yeah and he places a finger against your lips <laughs> <laughs> oh big big dirty monkey yeah, finger big dirty monkey finger oh, no. Jean Paul's oh. nasty <laughs> I mean he probably washes his hands but that's a goddamn Jean monkey Paul's hey, they're wearing gloves. Oh, hands. oh they're wearing gloves oh my god I'm a terrible mm-hmm. GM they're wearing gloves it's, he places a glove f- on both hands or on all four no, hands. No, not on his feet. He's not wearing shoes. Uh, he, but he placed you. S- I asked you. You said he's not wearing shoes, and I said, "Is he wearing gloves?" Oh well, I assumed you meant like gloves on. And his he has hands. four hands. Not, not. I mean, oh. his feet are still feet, you <laughs> dipshit. I assumed that you. You have to clarify. Yeah, does that does that mean? I'm sorry. Does that mean he can't wear gloves on his feet? <laughs> I mean, that's a hilarious idea, but that's not, I got the impression you just meant normal gloves, which I, I, I think, I think what Hunter's asking is, is, is he wearing socks? No. <laughs> a different thing. Those is, would be like monkey is, toe is socks. Is he wearing f- yeah. fingery monkey socks? Anyway. Fucking feet. 
I'm gonna kill you, Taylor. Don't in, don't. Could don't he you... do the shocker while wearing gloves oh, Jesus. on his? He feet. places a lip. He places a finger on your lips. Shh, <laughs> little boy, you are hiding something, aren't you? Um, aren't we all? No, no, no. I mean, you look uh, very uh, suspicious. Are you trying to get into mischief, little boy? Only the playful kind. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Only the playful kind. Uh, I like you a lot, little boy. You have a springy spirit like a little rascal. <laughs> <laughs> well well thanks Jean Paul that's very kind He kind of leans in If you are getting up to mischief little boy I would like to be included <laughs> and just blows like a gust of cigarette smoke in your face <laughs> oh, Well um um, w- word amongst the some of the servants is um, there's a pretty high valuable item just uh, just waiting to be liberated. Oh, is this true? And uh, I really don't think anyone here would miss it. And where would this item be held, dear? Alec, where did he say it would be held? I said it would be held in, like, that central sun thing that illuminates all the bubbles. Okay, yeah, I I figured, I just didn't know if you'd said a name. Uh, no, I'm dumb. And also, the people that explained it to you didn't know the name. Okay, yeah. And I, okay, then, uh, is, is the sun within our, like, like yeah, sight? Yeah, it's, it's, it's visible from all of them, right? It's like, this is a mobile, okay. like, of a galaxy, almost. And all the bubbles are oh, Okay, yeah, then I just, I just point up towards it. Oh... The first sun in the middle of the mobile. It would certainly be a clever place to hide something of value. Are you going to attempt to steal it, little boy? I was thinking about it. What a little scamp. (laughs) (sighs) That is some mischief. You know, uh, since you were willing to tell me about your mischief, I think I will pass on a little bit of uh, my own. Oh, do tell. He kind of looks around, and he gets in real close. Listen to me, little boy. Me and my boys, we are going to make a little bit of, uh, how you say, uh, firecrackers go off. So if you value uh, being in one piece, do not be in this bubble at the end of the night. Question. Go ahead. The a- the after parties are taking place in a separate location. Both of them are, yeah. Okay, at separate bubbles. Uh-huh. Okay, okay. Uh, oof, uh... Okay, uh, <laughs> whoa, that's, that's, that's pretty hardcore. That's, that's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Take, takes a couple steps back, takes another drag. Extremely cool. <laughs> Look, yeah, I like Jean-Paul again. <laughs> oh, I love I this monkey. This monkey. He good. And... To be honest, you probably do not want to be in that sun of yours, either. Oh? Look, I'm going to be completely honest. You don't want to be in this entire complex. Oh. He flicks the cigarette at the ground and steps on it. Secret. But he's not wearing shoes. It doesn't matter, dude. He's hard as fuck. He steps on it anyways. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> The, the Crimson Vigil sends its regards. Oh, oh fuck! <laughs> and Jean Paul makes his way out of the alleyway. <laughs> oh fuck! Damn. I have a question. <laughs> uh, 
I have was many this questions. was this first episode stuff? Yeah, this is first episode stuff. Okay. Okay. So then Griff would not know. Well, would Griff uh, know who the Crimson Vigil is? Absolutely. This oh, is actually what what long stuff. Crimson Vigil is like uh, okay. the sister organization to the Ministry of Our Hidden Mistress. Um, oh. They are particularly affixed to Lekole, uh, who is one of the facets, uh, one of the three facets of uh, Demno, who is uh, retribution and vengeance and uh, justice. And they are like the IRA, right? They are extremists. Oh. Yeah. Like, they, they get up to extremely violent uh, displays because... The drow have three heavens, right? Um, one of them being the dark city. It's sort of the dark side of the moon. One of them being the, the moon gardens. Um, that's the, the lit side of the moon where Damna herself sits. And uh, and then finally, whenever the blood moon appears, there's a third. This is like this infinite, not infinite, but this almost infinite like crimson plain filled with the martyrs of the crimson vigil. So the crimson vigil like want to die violently in battle for like Damna so they can become these massive 10 foot tall reincarnated angel saints uh, on on this third secret heaven on the face of the moon um so yeah the crimson vigil do not fuck around hot fucking damn um and he said i don't want to be anywhere within this this sort of bubble array yeah, within the mobile yeah within the complex Shit, uh, that puts a, a bit of a clock on things. Mm, fuck. And this is happening when? He didn't say. End of the night. I End of the night, yeah. Um, I, uh, I think Griff's first thought is, oh shit, my team. And then boom, we jump back over to the carriage, finally oh. making its way. Oh, it's a God. perfect cut! Finally fuck. making its way into the final bubble you kind of haven't even been able to see sort of hidden tucked away the, the pluto of this mobile um and yeah you can smell it first of course um uh patrick Lee's pulls up like a like a, a cloth underneath his mask um and you see several other people do it as well and he, he hands uh, a small like cloth ring to you yeah i'll Hello. take it yeah probably need it this is not exactly a pleasant scent but it adds to the atmosphere ah uh, the atmosphere of what of hell Something close. Our friend Titus here has made a uh, incredible recreation of the heart itself. Oh, huh. Well, I, I suppose that is interesting, actually. Yes, I'm rather proud of it. It is uh, the crown jewel and the ongoing project of the mobile. Hmm. Well. And then, yeah, and then you can begin to see it through the end of the tunnel. It, it is exactly uh, how one anticipates, like uh, like everything else, a cartoonish rendition of the heart. Um, in particular, the heart's blooded sections. So, of course, like, these sort of false meat walls. Uh, some of them may be real meat walls. Um, uh, yeah, and yeah, stone, cavernous, and uh, yeah, oppressive heat, humidity, all that good stuff hits you immediately. Mm. Yeah, and I feel like just... Just for flavor's sake, I feel like Willow gets some brief, like, flashback memories of, like, wandering in these, like, haunted, like, woods as a child. You know, mm-hmm. not haunted, but you know what I mean? Yeah, these yeah. changed woods near, yeah. her, near her home. And she's like, I feel like she can't really explain it herself why this reminds her of this, but yeah. She comes yeah. back to the clip. I feel like all the heart's blood and stuff, no, it makes perfect sense. I think yeah. almost immediately, you're like, oh, wait, hold on. There's, like, there's like a, an architectural um, similarity here. Yeah. The way things are warped. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, then, and then the carriage stops uh, in a large clearing, large, you know, meaty clearing. Um, and, and Titus exits first, and you can see out the windows another carriage is already here. Uh, a much bigger carriage, even though, once again, this is a huge carriage. Uh, this one, almost like a circus carriage. And you can see it's moving. Hmm. Uh, and you can hear these thuds coming from inside. Well, sounds like you caught a live one today, Titus. <laughs> well, oh it my God. certainly won't be an easy one. <laughs> this were, was rather expensive, and <laughs> the delvers that perished, well, they certainly added to the collection, didn't they? And that's when Willow, you see that arranged around this kind of massive cavern, there's kind of a diorama um, of what appear to be stock still people um all sort of gasping in horror um kind of towards this this general area um and yeah you realize these are taxidermied people 
Oh, oh yeah. Sister Spr- yeah, I feel like oh, she, holy yeah, shit. she definitely reacts to that uh, character. Yeah, mm-hmm. probably gasps a little bit. Uh, oh, <laughs> don't worry. They're already dead. I can see that. Oh, God, how hard. Well, you wouldn't want to put them to waste, would you? Put them to what? You want to want to put them to rest? Oh, don't worry. Uh, their Spring. insides got put oh. to rest. And Titus paid all of their families oh, handsomely. Or, or so, he, so he says, isn't that right, Titus? I assure you they were paid handsomely. <laughs> oh, this is horrendous. Uh, and, uh, yeah, you see, like, Guntersound steps out. You don't know Guntersound, but, uh, yeah, he's kind of a solemn guy, and he's like, uh, don't worry, little one. I also find this absolutely repulsive. I'm glad I'm not the only <laughs> one. Oh, God. She's kind of, like, giving some, like, shocked glares at, like, Patrocles and Titus. Mm-hmm. And, and you see this gnarled little man next to Mr. Guntersound, like this little bound knot of an old man, um, of a drow, say, uh, Ah, I, at least they could have posed them interestingly. I mean, look at that cliche. <laughs> yeah, I guess they could have. <laughs> I am inclined to agree. That is a mediocre scene setting. I- I'm sorry, I'm afraid I haven't caught your name, sir. Hmm. Oh. Uh, I am Breeze Through the Willow. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. I am uh, Mr. Gunther Sound, one of the editors. It's a furnace. You, oh my, my, you are? Well, well, don't get too excited, little missy. I own the damn thing. Re- my, my, well, I must say I am actually an avid reader of your little publication. Ah, you pay for it or you steal it. <laughs> I, I, I do pay for it. I find myself lucky enough to be able to. I'm joshing with you, gal. <laughs> I'm Mr. Yarl. Kind of oh. sticks out a little gnarled hand. Well, it's wonderful to meet you. Yeah, she shakes his hand. Mm-hmm. I am a breeze through the willow, in case you didn't hear my previous introduction. Yes, this is my little date. I Ooh. found her in the, uh, the ice baths. As beautiful as could be. Uh, and yes, I'm sure you may know Patrocles. Oh, they know me. Going to sound, Jarl. You're doing well. Nah, we're fine. Pretty excited, huh? I know I have been craving this for ages. Shall we arm ourselves, gentlemen? I would enjoy doing that. Uh, so, is there, like, a big, like, I guess I'll see. Okay, never yeah. mind. Hey, and you see the big carriage, um, and, uh, one of, uh, one of Titus's attendants, like, cracks it open, essentially. Like, it snaps open, like, a, essentially an armory, like, swings open, like, like a cabinet or, like, a pantry. And, yeah, it is just filled with swords and sabers and pole arms and axes and flails, galvanic guns and bizarre galvanic weaponry, uh, you know, like, Aelfir uh, bows and crossbows and just weaponry of all kinds. And, yeah, uh, see, uh... Patrick, Patrickles kind of looks at the weapons for a while, picks this beautiful ivory gold engraved crossbow, uh, and grabs a quiver of, of arrows. Uh, uh, Mister Yarl grabs like a, a giant morning star. Uh, Guntersound just grabs like a handgun, um, and yeah, people just uh, yeah, <laughs> people just start to yeah arm themselves. Uh, I feel like I'm. She's like looking around to see if the rest of the team has arrived yet. Um, I think it'll it'll be a second. Yeah. I figured, I figured, but I, just like Willow and characters, like, uh. Yeah, so Willow uh, doesn't see anything. She's, yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, just all of these rich sickos. Mm-hmm. And you see people are starting to uh, deal with, like, the, the gate mechanism on this massive carriage that's, that's rocking back and forth. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I already have a gun on me concealed, but I think I'm going to grab another gun. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And these are beautiful weapons. I mean, it's paladin weaponry, essentially. Um, and yeah, I feel like by the time everybody's done arming up, um, yeah, I think that's around the time that, uh, Gertrisa and Oren, you can, you probably end up arriving. Yeah, so do we just pull right up behind the, the carriage, or? Uh, that's up to you. Uh, you you were just following the tracks and everything, so, um, yeah, if you guys just want to come straight out into it. Oren is yeah, expected, th- you, on the other hand. Yeah, I think, um, I'm gonna stop right outside the entrance of this, uh, of this little area, um, and I'm gonna ask Oren. You're expected here, yes? Um, I think so. Yeah. I'm supposed to be coming with Willow, but asshole Patrocles decided I had to walk. Yes, yeah, not surprising. Uh, do you have room for a plus one? Uh, plus two? Uh, I'm sure. From what Patrocles was saying, it seemed like this was some kind of weird blood sport. I don't know if it's drow on drow while Elfir watch, or I don't know what the hell to expect, but... I'm sure he wouldn't be mad about a nice fighting hyena. 
Yes, well, uh, I, I'll, I'll just uh, tag along and uh, let you do the talking. Sure, yeah. And then, yeah, we'll walk in um, and just kind of assess the situation. Yeah, you walk into this cavalcade of freaks all arming up with weapons they clearly probably don't know how to use. Um, and yeah, you see kind of Willow nervously in the midst of all of them. You see this massive carriage, of course. You see it banging, you know, kind of side to side. Uh, and yeah, you see people are beginning to kind of gather up in little clusters and stuff, uh, clearly kind of waiting for something to happen. Yeah, I'll kind of give a wave towards Willow and Patrocles. I feel like, yeah, Willow catches his eye and is like, oh, oh, Owen, oh, Owen, oh, thank goodness you're here. Over here, please. Yeah, I know, head over there. Light jog. And Gertrice is just kind of following <laughs> silently. <laughs> <laughs> like a, like yeah. a little ghost. Oren, good to see you've made it. And I see you've managed to pick up a plus This one. is my granddaughter! A- Grandson! Oh, oh. Forgive me, Patrick, please. Oh, you're, this is your grandmother? Yes, this is my bodyguard's grandmother. <laughs> this is often a dynamic that I find myself with, Patrocles. I know, it's it's a little odd. It's And it this seem- is my service dog. Yes, this is my bodyguard, my bodyguard's grandmother, and my bodyguard's grandmother's service dog. <laughs> she serves Willow's grandfather, you understand. They all serve my grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> they do, Patrocles. They, oh, they I like to imagine she's just standing there like a ghost under this sheet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I was at the party. I don't think we met. My name is Gatrisa. Well met, Gatrisa. So you're Oren's grandmother. Hey, how did you manage to find your way to this party? He told me he lives with me. You, your bodyguard invited his grandmother to the party you, I invited you to. <laughs> My apologies. Uh, you must understand, Patrocles. She's getting quite old. Uh, I made him do it. Uh, oh, She see, did she... make me do it a little. It's hard to say no to a grandmother. But I figured you might appreciate this dog of hers as uh, I've seen it rip men in two. I thought you might appreciate the spectacle. Yes, Belvin here, uh, just like snap, like uh, the flip of a hat, just like totally different tone. Yes, Belvin really is uh, uh, an excellent hunter, if I do say so myself. Oh, well, uh, honestly, I can see the logic there, Oren. I don't blame you at all, and what kindness bringing your grandmother out and about to get some fresh air, you know, not let the brain rot and all. Yes, uh, I can tell you that I am severely at risk of that. <laughs> That's a tragedy, madam, but I'm glad to have you on my hunt. But be safe, uh, and watch your dog. I don't know if you'll be wanting our little furried friends here close to what we have hidden in that box over there. And what exactly is it? It's tonight's entertainment. Uh, it's going to be a surprise until Titus reveals it, but presumably it's a heart's blood beast. Mm. Ah. Has them shipped up from the heart during these little soirees for just such an occasion. He knows how a good hunt gets the blood pumping, and there is no beast like a heart's blood in a beast. You two don't look too close at that diorama. Why not? Oh, dear. Yeah, I warned you. Well, good to know. I think Orin will walk over and grab, like, some kind of rifle awesome and yeah i mean you can see deacon sunrise and his attendants sunrise has this massive ale fear uh, uh like compound bow um and he's taken okay. off some of his vestments i'm literally just imagining like a badass priest like 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 a sleeveless essentially like vestment like, <laughs> yeah like with a collar um yeah and like revealing like a little bit of like rip fucking ripped midriff um and yeah this guy's like seven feet tall i think it should be clarified he's disturbingly tall like e- e- even by ale fear standards like huge Cool, yeah. I mean, as I walk over, I'll, I'll give him, like, kind of a nod, bow, uh, wave, whatever is appropriate, um, as I'm grabbing this rifle. Yeah, I think he, you know, kind of gives you a soft nod and, uh, you know, turns back to gently whispering to his attendants. Everybody's pretty much armed, and Titus kind of steps out, um, 
from talking to the the folks that are working on the box, kind of the gate locking, uh, the, you know, the trailer, I guess is more appropriate, uh, kind of locking the, the trailer. And, uh, yeah, kind of calls out to everybody. All right, everyone, we're getting awfully close to beginning. Is everyone ready? Patrickles yells, yes, very ready. And, you know, a couple other people kind of yell out. And, uh, yeah, Titus kind of takes it in. Excellent. Thank you for joining me, everyone. Uh, you do know how I enjoy these events, but be careful now. We wouldn't want any accidents like last time. So, let the hunt begin. Um, and, uh, yeah, Titus has two huge handguns, um, sort of like wheel lock pistols. And, um, yeah, he turns around and the attendants pull, like, six huge bars, kind of two at a time. Shh. Shh. And, yeah, and then the gates come fucking slamming open. Uh, the, one of the attendants manages to get out of the way, but uh, the door hits the other one, and it sends him reeling. Pah! And he hits the wall, comes colliding down, and you can see some, like, blood well from his head. Um, and he gets up and tries to move uh, forward. Um, and then um, sort of a, a cartilaginous... Not cartilaginous. Um, sort of a... a, a yeah, this uh, giant chitin, it's almost like a spear tip. Um, rins through his shoulder all the way out through the back of his torso. Like, and, and spears him entirely through. Picks him up, shish kebobbed, and draws draws him back uh, into what is something like a mantis claw or, or a, a massive spearing pistol shrimp that begins to scuttle out of this trailer. Uh, a, a giant, elongated, like a lobster tail body with massive clicking legs. Uh, all of them splintered at like the the knee into two more legs so ending in sort of a raised up front that ends in two arms that in this case are giant chitinous spears um and its head has these two giant bulbous eye stalks that end both in four eyes each so double the amount of eyes of like a regular mantis shrimp and uh, they they wriggle in these inhuman and absurd uh, color arrays and uh he pulls the the, the drought back and then opens up uh, sort of a, like a circular maw, and, uh, begins to chomp into it, and then begins to scuttle the rest of its length out as it's chomping in, eyes whipping back and forth, uh, scanning the crowd. Oh god. Uh, I feel like this is the first time Willow has ever seen someone die, uh, as a side note. Oh god. Um, yeah. But, yeah, this is probably pretty horrifying. I actually feel like she tries to run away. Tries to leave. Oh, wow. Well. Uh, yeah, if you try to step, and try to take steps away, I mean, Patrick, will grab your arms. Stay fast, Willow! The hunt has just begun. Uh, All right, uh, let's uh, let's uh, check in on Sunet. Okay, so are uh, are you gonna uh, wait for Reason? Are you gonna do what you said and leave and come back, or what's your plan? Oh, I I was I went over to the little food tables and grabbed me some crackers, like I said. Oh, crackers are presumed. But after that, yeah, are you gonna make your way out, or are you just gonna go straight back to Reason? No. No, the uh, the brood thing was just is just more of an impulsive thing that Sunette does. It, she can do it at any time. So on her way home, she generally does that. Okay, no, that's fine. Uh, I get you. I just just for reasons' sake, because he's just expecting yeah. you. To... No, no, I I didn't leave. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, and I feel like it doesn't take super long. Um, you probably see these monkey guys being fucking weird, right? Probably see these monkey guys being very <laughs> strange. I. I, I won't give you any more <laughs> details than that, but yeah, they're uh, in comparison to the rest of the attendants, and just because Sinet is so observant, um, yeah, they're they're very strange. They they are monkey guys, so they're... I I don't know how they normally act. So I'm just gonna assume <laughs> this is how they normally act. Fair enough. I guess you could say they're up to monkey business. They're just guys who happen to be monkeys. Oh oh, you don't, you then... don't know if they're they're always that way. Come on. Okay, I mean... Don't, don't be racist. I'm sorry, I... It, I forgive you. I don't... And yeah, you see I'm Pent. scared, guys. I'm being <laughs> cyberbullied again. Always. That's why you show up here, Taylor, is to be cyberbullied. I'm a masochist. Fuck you, Taylor! Yeah, I, Sinet doesn't give too much thought about it. Uh, yeah, and you see the kiddos are, are doing their thing. Uh, you know, uh, putting stuff up, and uh, if, if you're paying attention, clearly slipping things into their pockets. That's fine with me. At a lady. Uh, all right. And then, yeah, eventually Reason gets finished with sort of his little entourage. And uh, he, yeah, uh, approaches you again. Is your evening finished, Miss Annette? Can you accompany me? Ah, uh, I 
I've set aside some time for you. Let us head to this after party. Excellent. It will be a brief ride. We have a carriage waiting for us outside. Ah, thank you. Well, shall we? And he holds out an arm, sort of like elbow crooked. Ooh! <laughs> what a gentleman! I couldn't allow a lady to go unattended. Of course! And, yeah, if you take his arm, he leads you out to a, to a much smaller carriage than the sort of garish thing that everybody else rode to the Heart's Blood Bubble. Um, but, yeah, and then when you enter, it's pretty much just you, him, and Elsbeth. Um, and, and whenever you enter, <laughs> Elsbeth, kind of, her eyes go wide. Oh. No. I see you found a friend here. I'm sorry, I lied. It is you, Elsbeth, and Nocien. Um, Nocien acts like she does not know you. Um... But uh, at the very least, Elizabeth uh, widens her eyes. Oh, well, I see you've found a new friend, Reason. Yes, she's a new attendant, a midwife of the lower city. She seemed an excellent candidate for a, a little dinner. Well, if you believe as such, I will believe it as well. And your name is, Mushy? I... Uh... Yes, Maji, my name is Sinet, uh, as you can tell, as I lift up forearms. I am indeed a midwife. <clears throat> a noble profession, truly. And she uh, kind of looks over at Nocien and looks over at Reeson, and she lifts her mask. And you see, Elsbeth is a drow. A noble profession, indeed. And she lowers her mask again. I think you'll be welcome company, Sinet. I do hope so. Uh, Miss Say Reeson did not give too many particulars on what this after party entails, but I do hope. Nothing extreme, I assure you. Of course. I would not expect that. Something interesting, I do hope. Hopefully. If you find details interesting. And. Mushy Sinet, you strike me as a woman interested in details. Depends on what those details are. <laughs> Interesting ones. And the carriage, whoosh, takes off. This particular bubble is designed to resemble my homeland. Magwan Porth. Are you familiar, Miss Sinet? Um, I can't say that I am aware of it. <laughs> That's not too shocking. We can keep our profile low, though I'll, you've undoubtedly encountered some of the technology we are renowned for. Your, uh, arcology. Magwan Porth was the place in which the study the Vermissian lines are based upon was founded. Ah, fascinating. I happen to think so as well. I do hope your proclivities are a little bit more refined than the Vermissian tunnels are nowadays. Oh, I assure you, they are. Do you, uh, Oh, my friend here, Nocien, she may move in similar circles working for the Lodman Sun. Nocien gives you a nod. We have met. Yes, being a midwife, you do meet plenty of high-ranking individuals such as her. We always have to pay attention to the helpers, don't we, Sinet? Always. Well, you found yourself in the right carriage. Uh, Sinet kind of glances back and forth between everybody's like I think that I have thank you so much for joining us on this our fourth episode of Swan Dive I couldn't be more excited to make it this far and I couldn't be more thankful for every single one of you that's managed to listen up until this point hopefully this is the end of our basic technical issues and if not we'll power through see you next week folks safe travels